Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to practice predicting the products of reactions. And we're in chapter 8, and again, this is the chemical reactions chapter. So today we're going to practice predicting the products of single replacements. So first, let's recall what a single replacement reaction is, and that's where the reactants are an element and a compound. So the first step is always classifying and deciding element plus compound. This must be a single replacement. Then the next thing is to recognize that the element is going to replace one of the elements that are in the compound. And in order for that to happen, the element needs to be more active than the element that it's trying to displace. So in predicting single replacements, the first step is, again, recognizing that it's an element with a compound, and that element is going to try to kick out something in the compound, in this case, the cation, to give us that element and a different compound. So one element plus one compound, you get a different element and a different compound. An example here is the reaction of potassium with silver nitrate. Potassium is a metal. It's going to form a cation. It's going to try to replace silver. And if it can, and it can, silver will now be in its elemental state and will have a new compound, in this case, potassium nitrate. So there's a series of questions that you have to ask yourself. First off, is the element a metal or a nonmetal? If the element is a metal, then it will be cationic single replacement because metals form cations. If it's a nonmetal, then it's going to be anionic single replacement because nonmetals form negative ions, and those are the ones we call um, anions. So in either case, you're going to have to consult the activity series. And in the case of metals, this is the activity series for metals. And if it's a nonmetal, then the ones we're going to encounter are all going to be halogens in group 7 of your periodic table. And the order there is just as it appears here. So fluorine can replace anything below it. Chlorine can replace the things below it, but not fluorine, and so on. And then once you've consulted your activity series to decide whether the reaction can take place, then you're going to write formulas for the neutral compound and the element. And if the element is one of our seven diatomic elements, you have to remember to write it as a diatomic element, so H2, N2, O2, etc. So then I thought we would do some examples, and this is example one. Here we have aluminum plus sulfuric acid. So aluminum is a metal. That means that it's going to be cationic single replacement, and our first step is to check the activity series. And we see that aluminum can replace hydrogen, and it can replace hydrogen in acids. So now we know that it can take place. So now we understand that aluminum is going to try to kick out hydrogen and then form a new compound. So aluminum sulfate would be our new compound. So we have to write the formulas for the products, check they're correct, and then balance the equation. So here, aluminum plus sulfuric acid, aluminum kicks out hydrogen. There's hydrogen. It's diatomic. I've reflected that. And then the compound that forms is going to be between aluminum and sulfate, remembering that sulfate has a minus 2, so we crisscross. And aluminum forms a plus 3 ion, so we crisscross. And that would be our equation. This equation, however, is not balanced, so we're going to have to make sure that there are the same numbers of aluminums on each side, hydrogens, and sulfates. So once you go ahead and balance that, it's going to come out with a 2, a 3, and a 3 in order to balance. Example 2, we have chlorine plus Ki, which is potassium iodide. Now, chlorine is nonmetal, so it's going to be anionic single replacement. Again, chlorine is a nonmetal, and it would form a negative ion. We check our activity series. And here, chlorine is above iodine. That means it can take place. 
So now we go ahead and we're going to have to write the formulas for the products and balance. So remember, chlorine is kicking out iodine, so I'm going to have to write iodine in its elemental state and then form the compound between potassium and chloride. So again, chlorine plus potassium iodide yields KCl potassium chloride. Remember, potassium forms a plus one ion because it's a group one metal. And chlorine forms the chloride ion, which is group seven minus eight. So the ion is minus one. So they're going to combine in a one to one ratio. And iodine is one of our seven diatomics. So we have to write it as a diatomic molecule. This equation is not balanced. So when we go ahead and do our balancing, we'll need a couple of coefficients. So one chlorine molecule will react with two potassium chlorides, or iodides, excuse me, to produce two potassium chlorides and iodine. Example three, copper plus iron two sulfate. So copper is a metal and it is going to be cationic single replacement. Copper's trying to kick out iron. Consult the activity series, can copper kick out iron? So copper is here and iron is here. Copper cannot replace iron. So copper cannot replace iron according to our activity series. Therefore, we just write no reaction. Example four, iodine plus sodium chloride. Iodine is a nonmetal, so it will be anionic single replacement. We need to check our activity series. Iodine cannot do this replacement. It is below. So again, we're going to have to remember that since iodine is below chlorine in our periodic table, it cannot replace chlorine. So we have to once again write no reaction. So to summarize, in order to predict a single replacement, you'll go through a series of steps. First, you're going to determine whether it's cationic or anionic. And the way you make that decision is based upon whether the element doing the replacing is a metal, which will cause cationic, or a non-metal, which would cause anionic. Then you'll consult the appropriate activity series for metals or the periodic table for non-metals. And then you'll write the symbol of the element and the formula for the new compound and make sure that you balance your equation. So I hope this helps. I'm going to be recording some more tutorials for you. Um, so for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.